Hey, what's up guys, and welcome to Dark Logic Studios Attack on Titan manga reviews and discussions. Before we go any further, I want to give you fair warning that these videos are going to contain lots and lots of spoilers, so if you haven't read the latest chapter, then what are you doing with your life? Seriously though, if you don't want spoilers, you should probably click on something else. If you're all caught up though, then let's get to it. Hey, what's up guys, and welcome to my live reaction and review of Attack on Titan Chapter 102. So quick recap, the last couple chapters have been pretty freaking crazy. We had the festival that we were building up to, Eren showed up, turned into a titan, started fucking everything up, killed Willy, we got the Warhammer Titan finally revealed, it turned out to be his sister, not Willy Tiber. After all, her and Eren had a very brief but very violent <laughs> confrontation. And now just all hell is breaking loose and people are dying and it's just horrible. Horrible shit. But in the end of the last chapter, we got to see, finally, our main characters, the Survey Corps, are finally back in the story. We got to see Mikasa last time. I think we saw Jean, but chapter 102 is out. So let's go ahead and continue to the next chapter. Now I haven't read this chapter yet. I'm gonna go ahead and do a live reaction. Well, not really live, but my reaction as I'm reading it. I think I'm gonna try to do that from now on for every chapter. So enough blabbering, let's get to this. So this chapter is called, It's Too Late. In the first panel, we see a train, we see Commander Maggoth, and he's yelling into a phone, he's saying, the chain of command has been broken down just now. This will be a trying time for the strength of our Marley army. All those from among the special watchguard training division of the army descend from the mountain. Those of the open sea armada as well. Amass the military strength of 30,000 men from the west and the east here. Blockade the Liberio internment zone. Do not allow any of the demons from the island escape, especially not the founding titan. So we see him in a building hiding with a couple of the guards. He looks out the window and sees the devastation, and he thinks they're on a rampage right now. There's no future for any of them anymore. The ones who were affected by this massacre incident were government officials who had participated in the ceremony by involving them from the major nations. In accordance to the prediction of Willy Tiber, the crisis of the Eldian Empire became well known to the world. The world cannot allow you all to live. And he sees a survey corps flying around at the window. However, even if they must accept such a thing, if that's the case, what the heck should we think about something like this? And they freaking throw some kind of grenade in, and it explodes. Shit, does that mean Captain Maggoth's dead? So the soldiers on the roof, they try to shoot him down, then they get harpooned, freaking A. And one of the Survey Corps members, he's climbing up, shoots one of the guards, throws him off the roof. He's watching the building burn, and he says, you're... And he swings around, he's like, oi, and it's Jean! And he's got long, fancy hair and some scruff. <laughs> Everybody's got such fancy hair now. And he says, do you intend on burning down each of the internment zones? Restrain yourself and minimize the damage dealt to civilians. He says, do you understand, Flock? <laughs> wow, Flock's got fancy hair too. Everybody's got such fancy hair. They must like have a hairdresser with them now. It just kind of runs around with a survey for it. <laughs> so far, everybody seems to have a longer, shorter, or a different style haircut. I wonder what Armin's hair is going to look like. I wonder if his hair is going to be like down to his knees or something. <laughs> I hope Isayama doesn't make it short, because then he's going to look just like Jean and Flock. <laughs> so Flock's like Jean. So for the enemies here, have you forgotten about the extent to which these people on the exterior of the wall have killed those of us who were humanity within the walls? The ones who were devoured? We can't settle for things as how they are now, all right? And John goes, you're still saying stuff like that? Look, Flock says, and then he points out to Aaron and he says, Aaron exemplifies this. He's fighting. We weren't just going to wait for death within the walls. And he says, to us, those demons are necessary. So then we cut to Mikasa and Aaron. And Mikasa's looking around and she's like, Aaron, you, do you understand what you've done? You killed civilians. You even killed children. That's already irredeemable. Aw. She starts tearing up. And Aaron says, Mikasa, 
It's not over yet. You see the Warhammer Titan coming back to life. She says, this can't be happening. I completely blew out the nape. I also thought that the nape ought to be sufficiently crushed. And he says, but that one hasn't died. Damn. Then the Warhammer Titan manifests a crossbow and shoots it at Eren and, and Mikasa, but she manages to fly away with him. And it hits the Titan right in the neck or where it should be. Eren says, the Warhammer Titan. With its hardening ability, it seems that it can skillfully make anything that it wants to. That's from my understanding. So then Eren's Titan just falls over. And he says, but anyway, it seems like it won't be killed even if we crush the nape. Mikasa, get that one's attention. If it all goes smoothly, I'll eat the Warhammer Titan. So then we cut to the hospital. Someone says, this is bad. All the beds have been filled already from a while ago. That kid is long dead. Oh no! <laughs> oh, he died. Shit. And Colt's like, no way. Please just examine him. And the doctor says, someone like you should look at this situation. Aren't you a warrior cadet? Oh fuck. That's so fucked up. Eh. And he says, Gabby, you're living together with your family. Given the circumstances, I don't know where it's probably safe for now. But stay as far away from the plaza as you possibly can. All of the warriors will bring down the Titan at the plaza. I'll head back in order to find Falco. And Gabby says, I'll head back too. Why were Udo and Sophia killed? I don't understand. And she runs off. Colt says, Gabby, wait. Don't go. Wow, she really is like Eren 2.0. The second coming of Eren Jaeger. <laughs> so she's running down the street. And the guard says, Oi, halt. And they recognize her. And one says, Gabby, what are you doing? From here on out, it's the battlefield. Mr. Gatekeeper. Let me through, because I'll fight too! He stops her and he says, That's a stupid thing to say, Gabby, alright? You need to head back home. Then as he's talking, it looks like the, one of the trucks behind him freaking bursts into flames or something. He turns around and he's like, What? From above, they're dropping bombs! And there's a survey corps again, dropping down these incendiaries. And the guard says, Shit! Just who are these guys? Gabby, run away! Oh <laughs> shit. And then they freaking both get shot and drop to the ground. Damn. Gabby looks down, she's like, Mister? And up above you see somebody shooting. Is that Sasha? Yes, yes it is Sasha. So this must be Connie with her. The street is also blocked off. Let's go, Sasha. Connie, did you forget about turning on the lights? Ah, I did. So he puts this light thing at the top of a building. I'm guessing this must be some kind of signal. And Gabby's just looking on at all the devastation around her. And she looks down and sees a gun and picks it up. So Connie and Sasha join Jean on a, a rooftop. And Connie says, Jean, the enemy's reinforcements won't be here for a while. And he says, I've pretty much held off the enemy too. What about the light installations? They've all been set. Is our strategy working well? Now in that respect, for the time being, we still have to subdue the Warhammer Titan. But I don't know about that. It wouldn't be weird if something should happen, right? What happened prior to this battle? In order for us to figure that out, it can't survive this. So then we see Mikasa, she's going in for another hit. She strikes the Warhammer Titan in the eye. Oh, look at that. The Warhammer Titan starts manifesting another weapon. It's like a sword. Freaking <laughs> cuts through the building? Like in five or six different places? the hell? I understand the true sense of feeling uneasy. I sensed it when the Warhammer Titan appeared. The unease. That one. The body was built up from its feet, not from the nape. Hmm. So from the ground at the center of the stage, the real body of the Warhammer Titan is there. Ah, interesting. So the Warhammer Titan, apparently not only can it manifest these weapons, from its hardening ability, but it seems to be able to control its titan outside of the titan. It doesn't have to be in the nape. It looks like it's connected by some kind of string or something. It's kind of gross. Anyway, so Aaron jumps down. He turns into a titan again. He smashes through the ground and oh shit, he found her. He figured it out, that smart cookie. So he grabs Willie's sister, whatever her name is, <laughs> picks her up. She's, all, she's in this crystallized thing just like Annie, Annie was. Hmm, are we gonna hear something more about Annie? Now that this crystal, uh, crystal thing's coming up again? 
So he picks it up, he disconnects it, and the Warhammer Titan falls to the ground. Everybody's watching. Magath is like, this is bad. Oh, he's still alive. Hey, Magath. <laughs> and there's Levi! <laughs> Yay, Levi! So good to see your short ass. He says, the Warhammer Titan will be eaten. Oh, there's there's Galliard right behind him. The Jaw Titan, he pounces. Magus like, the Jaw Titan? Oh shit, he's going right for Aaron's nape. Galliard's thinking, I've been waiting for this moment. The recovery of the founding Titan. The Servi Corps, everyone's like, what the hell? Aaron! Damn. So he freaking bites down. But he finds that he can't, he can't do it. He says, what? I can't gnaw through? Shit. So I guess Aaron hardened just in time. And there's Levi flying around. So they're struggling. Callier's like, now, th now there's this guy? Oh man, he's fucked. Don't tell me, that's the Ackerman? <laughs> it's the Ackerman. You're screwed. He's like, this is bad. Run, 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 run. Flee, little jaw titan. He's like, these fools, no way. But I'm a titan! <laughs> and while they're all in human form, they think that they'll kill me? They are the demons of Paradise Island! Dun 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 dun! Oh shit, what's going on now? Ah, uh, they're getting shot at. Don's like, damn it! These guys too? The cart titan? There's Pike. Damn. Now this is gonna be a freaking showdown. Somehow or another, I made it just in time. As expected. This heavy machine gun armament is a natural enemy to the 3D maneuver gear, so it'll be worth taking my time. Shoot down the enemies! Panzer unit! Understood! Aaron looks up, he looks into the crystal, and she's looking at him. Creepy. And she starts to manifest the Warhammer Titan again. Oh shit! She creates like this tree under him, and impales him on all these branches. Jean's like, it's coming. And there's Levi, just standing around being a badass. He doesn't need to do anything else. Oh my god! Oh shit! <laughs> there's Zeke! Here we go! I knew it, I knew they were gonna fight again. They have to, come on. Levi promised Erwin! But now I don't want Zeke to die because I kinda like Zeke now. <laughs> it's the Beast Titan! Ah! Kelly was like, Zeke's on! There's a guard's look on. Gabby, she's she's running through the streets, running towards all the chaos. She's like, I'm going to kill you, Aaron Yeager. Aaron's looking on. Zeke says, don't let them escape. Annihilate them. Oh, shit. Don't die. Survive. Oh, my God. No, <laughs> it can't be the end. Oh, shit, man. The battle continues in the April issue. Well, no, no, no footnote. No footnote. Okay, so that was a pretty awesome chapter. Holy shit. We finally got to see Jean and Sasha and Connie and freaking Levi. <laughs> Levi is the only one that has the same haircut as he did four years ago. In fact, Levi has had the same haircut apparently since he was like 12 years old. <laughs> He's never gonna change his hair, which is fine with me. Please don't change your hair, Levi. Your hair is great. We got Aaron there with the Attack Titan and the Founding Titan. Warhammer Titan there, freaking the Jaw Titan and the Cart Titan showed up, and now Zeke is here, and holy shit, we got almost all of our freaking Titans together, all fighting each other. The only ones we're missing are the Armor Titan, the Female Titan, and the Colossal Titan. So I wonder if those three are gonna show up too, before all of this is over. We still haven't seen Armin yet, so... So I kind of think he's gonna show up as the Colossal Titan. Oh man, so this is just all out war. This is gonna be about as insane as Attack on Titan can get. Magus is calling the entire Marleyan army to that internment zone to try and take down Eren and the Survey Corps. And if we get all of our Titans here in one place, if the rest of them show up and we have an all out battle, then separately they're probably pretty evenly matched. You know, considering that Eren has the coordinate, but the only way he can use the coordinate is with someone with royal blood. But if the rest of them do show up, then we're gonna have the Founding Titan, the Attack Titan, 
the Colossal Titan, and hopefully the female Titan now joining the Survey Corps. That's what I hope is going to happen. That's what I hope is going to happen with Annie, that she's just going to join up with him. And then on the Marleyan side, we've got the Jaw Titan, the Cart Titan, the Beast Titan, the Warhammer Titan, and the Armor Titan, which I think is going to end up in Falco's hands. So I have so many questions. There's so many questions that I have after this chapter, and I've got a few predictions. I'm just going to go through them real quick before I wrap up this review. But man, this chapter was another amazing chapter. Like, they just keep getting better and better and crazier and crazier. And this is, I don't know, I'm like, I don't know if I'm prepared for how insane this is going to get. <laughs> so, in the official translation, it's called Too Little Too Late. And that's almost a little bit more bleak than the, the unofficial one that I did my reaction to. And that translation was unfortunately a little wonky, but that's okay. The important thing are these questions. What are the lights for? What is Zeke's plan? What is Aaron's plan? What are the Survey Corps gonna do? What the heck is Gabby gonna do? What the hell are Reiner and Falco gonna do? And where the hell is Annie? Oh, and of course, we can't forget that Levi and the Beast Titan are about to go head to head into battle. And that's gonna be insane. Who's gonna win that battle? Is Levi really gonna take home Zeke's head for a trophy, put it on Irwin's grave or something? Or is Levi going to die? I think that there's a pretty good chance that he might actually die. I hate to say that, but unfortunately, there's been a little foreshadowing. Zeke and Aaron, I really think that they are, they have some kind of plan together. They have some kind of shared goal that they've communicated about. And I think it has something to do with using the coordinate because as I've said before, and as other people have started talking about recently, Aaron needs someone with royal blood to use the coordinate. Zeke has royal blood and the Marley don't know that. So if Zeke and Aaron get together on the battlefield, if they clash, if they make contact, like Aaron did with Dinah back in the Clash of the Titans arc, Aaron is going to be able to use the coordinate. And I'm pretty sure that that's going to happen. That, that's got to happen. So the question is, what is Aaron going to do when he unlocks that power? What's going to happen? Is everyone just going to die? Or is there going to be some kind of time loop reset thing that people have been talking about? It's going to be something. It's going to have something to do with the paths. Like they were talking about the paths several chapters back. And whatever those paths are, whatever the coordinate is, is going to determine how this story ends. As for the Survey Corps, they were obviously prepared to do this. They either already had a plan in place or they have just become so freaking resourceful that they can just jump out and run after Eren and go to war at the drop of a hat. <laughs> it's just kind of unrealistic. We see them, you know, burning down buildings, at least Flock is. <laughs> Flock's got some issues. And his position kind of is, sounds like what he's saying is that, you know, Jean wants him to minimize damage dealt to civilians. But to Flock, in Flock's eyes, he, he sees the Eldians in the internment zone in Marley, and to him he knows that, that they are the Titans. That's where the Titans came from. They are the people that the Marley took and brought to Paradise Island and injected and turned into Titans. And his anger, I think, is a little misdirected, but, but to him he feels like he is, you know, separate or different from the other, from the Eldians in Marley. That's his point of view. Which, I guess I can appreciate Flock because he's necessary to have that point of view in the story, but I just find him kind of obnoxious. <laughs> but anyway, Survey Corps, they've got these lights that they're putting up. Putting up at the tops of these buildings for some reason. So what are the lights for? Like I said, I think they have to be some kind of a signal. But I don't think we've seen Armin yet. I would hope that he's gonna get a nice cool entrance like everybody else did. If he's not, I'm gonna riot. But anyway, he is the Colossal Titan and we haven't seen the Colossal Titan yet. And uh, maybe it's just me, but the Colossal Titan is kind of a big deal. <laughs> no pun intended. So I think that Armin, the Colossal Titan, is obviously he's gonna have a big entrance. And I think that these lights, they're gonna use this to signal him to enter into the battlefield. It's gonna be pretty crazy seeing Armin as the Colossal Titan, but we have to see him as the Colossal Titan. I mean, come on. Can't make Armin the Colossal Titan and not let us actually see him as a Titan. So then what is Armin gonna do when he's the Colossal Titan in the midst of all this? Is he gonna run around killing people? I don't think so. Verdolt, even though he was a big part of the invasion and the walls, Verdolt didn't really kill anybody. You know, he just showed up, busted a hole in, and then disappeared. But he himself didn't actually try to kill anybody. He just let them, 
He just let the Titans in. So I imagine Armin is gonna play a similar role. If Zeke and Eren get together and use the coordinate and summon the colossal Titans from Paradise Island, whether whether they do it all the way from Marley or they've already brought them with them somehow, maybe with Historia. But like I said, I don't think that they would send her into battle because she's the queen, she's pretty important. So I think what's gonna happen is Eren and Zeke, they're gonna get together and they're gonna try to use the coordinate. The Survey Corps, they're gonna put up their lights and once they're done with that, the colossal Titan's gonna show show up and hopefully the female titan with it and then if that happens if zeke turns on the marley and lets that happen then the marley's fucked like they're just they're gonna be destroyed so is there anything is there anything that can stop that from happening at this point well i think there might be i think i think it's gonna have to do with our two kids that we have left hopefully see we know we saw gabby running towards the battlefield she's got a gun she's mad with rage and grief and she's running towards Aaron and she says, I'm gonna kill you, Aaron Yeager. And uh, like, she's just this little kid. Like, what is she gonna do? Obviously, there's not a lot she can do to actually fight these Titans, but it's gonna be interesting, I think, when Gabby does confront Aaron. I do think that they're gonna have some kind of confrontation. And obviously, I don't think Aaron is going to just kill her. I don't think Aaron is heartless enough to do that with his you know, old hands, you know, he's already killed a ton of people, including kids, just messed up. Bad Aaron, been a very bad Titan. But I think if she runs up to him, whether he's in Titan form or not, and she starts yelling at him, saying all this stuff, she's probably gonna sound exactly like he did when he was her age. And he's probably gonna see himself in her, and a lot of people have said that she is a lot like Aaron, and she is. So, it would be interesting if he saw his younger self in Gabby, and that finally affected the choices that he's gonna make. Another factor is Falco. Aaron and Falco managed to build a little bit of a rapport with each other. And I do think that Aaron feels a little bad for using Falco the way that he did. I mean, you know that Reiner and Falco are somewhere buried in the debris. They haven't shown up yet. We don't know if they're still alive. But here's what I think is gonna happen with that. We've been having some foreshadowing that Falco is actually going to inherit the armored titan because he's wanting to, you know, surpass Gabby so he could get it instead of her to kind of protect her from that life, basically. Which he probably never would have been able to actually accomplish. But in this situation, him and Reiner are together. And so I think what's going to happen is Reiner's going to wake up and he's going to find Falco and he's going to see that Falco is dying. And the only way that he can save him is by literally letting him inherit the armored titan. Kind of like, you know, with the whole serum bowl thing, <laughs> obviously. You you can save someone's life by making them into a titan because titans are virtually immortal so i think that reiner is going to find some way to save falco's life by finding a way to get him to inherit the armored titan right there i don't know how he's going to do that because from what we've seen we need serums to inject into a person to make them into a titan however as i've discussed before on this channel if the serums are nothing more than spinal fluid then theoretically you might be able to find a way to and this is not my theory, People, other people have been talking about this theory for a while, but as they pointed out, you might be able to take spinal fluid directly from the shifter and inject that into another person. The problem with that is if you don't do that correctly, you end up with an abnormal, like Rod Rice. Historia threw the syringe on the ground and broke it, and Rod Rice pretty much knew that he was gonna die, so he just licked the serum and ingested a little bit of it, and he turned into this big mutant thing. And <laughs> horrific titan and so if Reiner gets Falco to inherit the armored titan without a syringe if he just gets him to ingest some spinal fluid somehow it's so gross then that potentially could happen to Falco which would be even more messed up and I think would actually affect Aaron even more if he saw that, if he saw that that happened. Because it would be one thing if Falco inherited the Armored Titan and tried to fight Aaron, but if Falco inherited the Armored Titan and was also an abnormal, which really an abnormal is a, a Titan that basically, I, I don't know, they, they don't function right, They're, there's something wrong with them, or they they do some weird things or whatever. I'm not really quite sure what exactly the criteria for an abnormal is, but they're not normal titans, obviously. And so Falco could be this really messed up thing, and like, that's pretty messed up. Those two things happen. I can see it stopping Aaron from going through with his plan to use the coordinate, which may still happen, <laughs> but who knows? I guess we'll have to see. Anyway. Thanks guys so much for watching my reaction and review of Attack on Titan chapter 102. Come back next month for my review of chapter 103. And check back here on the weekends because 
I'm going to try to at least have one video out a month. I've had a lot going on, so I haven't had a lot of time to dedicate to videos. But still check back here on the weekends, because I might have some other stuff. Just kind of depends on how much time I got. Sorry I haven't been around much, but thank you guys so much for all your support. And hopefully things will get back on track soon. Love you guys, and I'll see you next time. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to like, share, comment, and of course subscribe if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter, and check out my Patreon if you want to help support this channel. Thanks again so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace.